name is Katrina Reid and I'm based in Gurik and my current art form is ink painting. Um, kind of by accident and a lot of experimenting. Um, just before lockdown really I had some materials lying around the house and um, I hadn't drawn for quite a long time and I was interested in just trying drawing in a different way with different materials and I had a tile and ink pens and so I started to see how that would work. I didn't know anything about that at all. Um, I was putting things in the oven and I was doing all kinds of strange things that weren't actually necessary but through that uh, process this evolved. Um, so I studied sculpture and environmental. Historically though I had always drawn um, and actually ironically drawn trees and things like that when I was really wee, mostly in pencil. But I went to the Glasgow School of Art and I did uh, sculpture and environmental art and it was amazing. But during that time I didn't really draw at all. You know, I annotated in sketchbooks and I drew out very quickly plans for like public artworks, which I love doing, but I didn't draw at all. It wasn't until really the last two or three years I've gone back to that. It definitely accelerated it, yes, that and uh, the, the silence, because it got so much quieter and I became, I think, like everybody, much more aware of nature and, you know, the rhythm of the seasons. And it was a really lovely connection. It was a beautiful thing to be able to have the time to do. It definitely wouldn't have happened to this extent without lockdown. Um, so my process is it's really technical, right? I like throw ink all over um, the tile. That's really how it starts. Um, but then there's just an awful lot of um, movement and sensitivity to touch and time because the ink will dry if it dries too fast then I can't move it if it's too wet then it's not going to give me any detail so that's really how it begins um, and a lot of patience so for every drawing that I have that I feel is successful there's almost always at least three or more that weren't and you just kind of have to be it's maybe very patient but very tolerant of that process because it's worth it I just keep trying and then once I've done that I'll use fine liner pens um, depending on what it is that I'm drawing and you know refine a little bit more detail. Favourite part of it actually is the varnishing because um, it is quite a long process and it takes quite a while to develop the, the painting drawing itself um, and then I finish the edges and then I go to varnish it and it can go really beautiful, like I can get a mirror finish on it and it looks incredible and it really brings out the detail that I've you know, enjoyed creating or sometimes it can crackle and eat all my ink and it's just gone altogether. Now, that doesn't happen very often, it's happened I think maybe 10 times over the last two years and I've tried to investigate and find out why but nobody really has an answer for me yet. No. No, um, which is unusual. I have looked, there are obviously people that do not to similar things, but I haven't found anybody that does it in quite the same way that I do. I kind of made it up, but I am sure there will be. I just haven't come across them yet. So ceramic and um, a specific brand of fine liner pen. I don't know why. Um, I have got like so many bottles of like ink, you know, proper drawing ink, Indian ink. Um, all of the really quite fancy expensive inks and none of them do what this pen will do so it's the ink from the pen that I use for the entire thing and that's really lovely because I get a different tonal range um, sometimes the light makes a big difference it's just black ink on white but it can look really sepia mm -hmm. um, or it can look quite warm and sometimes quite cool and I don't really know why, but I like it. Absolutely, yeah, definitely. I'm originally from Campbelltown. I really love being close to the water. Um, I really have always had, I love Scots pine trees, just I think because they've always, not in excess, but there's always been one or two wherever I was growing up when I was little. Um, and there's quite a few here as well. And um, yeah, definitely, I think that the, the scenery, the sounds, the smells, everything about Inverclyde is incredible. Yeah, definitely do it. <laughs> um, a lot of experimentation and, and failure, because that's how you learn, I think, never be, and I know it sounds maybe like a pure cliche and everything, but don't be afraid to fail. Yes, um, but without the same confidence. I do feel that that did make a difference. Um, I've always been very creative. I've, I've always not drawn, because life takes over, do you know, you don't really have the time, but I have always enjoyed being creative and whether it's making things or drawing or um, 
but really going to art school was massively changing. Like it, it really did. It gave me the confidence to understand that this is something that I could actually do, um, not just you know when I've got free time. So yeah, it's important. Um, so I, it's been actually the last couple of years in terms of the work has gone incredibly well. I'm really, you know, I'm very, there's still an awful lot for me to learn, um, but I'm really enjoying that. So I'm hoping that that continues and evolves into other things. I do an elephant, you know, like, so like different things, I know it's a bit random, but like, you know, moving on to a different body of work and um, maybe trying different materials. Yeah, I'm open to just experimenting and seeing what happens. At the same time, while I'm doing this, that's definitely a constant, but I'm also, I've gone back to pencil drawing, which I hadn't done for a long time, so I'm doing that. <clears throat> I also went back to painting, um, although I haven't done that for the last six months or so. I didn't really, I wasn't really getting into it, but I keep trying different things, because you never know, it might be something that sticks. Um, aye, but that changes. <laughs> um, at the moment, I'm really liking the thistles. I really do, I'm enjoying doing that, um, and I think the elephant. I would really like to be able to spend more time doing this um, and make it something that I can, you know, do and still still pay bills, still live, you know, be able to invest more time. Just now that the balance is a little bit of work five days a week and everything's done in the evenings and the weekends around children and around, you know, life and my partner, um, it would be really lovely if, if that could shift. That's what I'm aiming for. Yeah, it was utterly terrifying. I'd like to start with, honest to goodness, of like, even that last time there, I'm always really terrified to do it, um, but it's so worth it. It's, it's an incredible experience because people are coming in with fresh eyes. I mean, I live with this, I see this all the time, so I can't see it as clearly anymore. And uh, the feedback that I'm getting is, is brilliant. And it's not that it's all, oh, that's amazing. Do you know, some people are like, it's a bit black and white, isn't it? And that's, that's fine, that's cool, um, but it's definitely beneficial. And it's a really supportive community as well. Like it is, it's lovely to feel a part of that. And doing that pop-up shop offers that, you know, for the five days you do, you feel like you're really part of something in the town. Um, I think, yeah, I think that it's really good to, I really love collaboration. It's quite a difficult thing to do sometimes, but I really enjoy the conversations about it, you know, chatting about you know what people are interested in um, trying out different things you know whether it's joining maybe a local group or something or just making contact with with other people um, yeah and just asking questions I think that's a really beneficial thing to do I that's how I learn you know from like other people yeah <laughs>